The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Well, I think it's hello and welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk because I didn't hear the, the introduction music. It was for the last month. It's been it's been blowing our eardrums out, and today we can't hear it. So I don't know, CJ. Do we have audio? Welcome to live television. You should have audio now. Okay. Well, okay, no. I guess for all you people that missed our opening music, if we if we if you did, we apologize. No. Oh no, they they heard the opening music. You're yeah, the other this one is this it. is live this is live TV. So you know we will have our little glitches and uh, this is what happens like getting trapped in a microphone cord so well I'm Chip I am CJ and I'm Carlos that's right <laughs> and here we are the, the, the amazing three hey I've got I've got to address something right away uh -oh. okay and I'm telling you now you're not gonna be happy that's always uh, a problem. It's always a problem. Let me tell you something. Hey, Ma, get me a Hot Pocket. I'm being oh. a badass on Facebook. <laughs> You've been bad on Facebook. You I'm know, telling I, you. No, I'm not a bad on Facebook. You know, I made a comment, okay, on Facebook about selfies incriminating you. You know, I said selfies will be your conviction because a certain state representative had a selfie with a mayoral candidate. Uh, with an American flag, and I'm all for giving out the American flags. But I said these, you know, already seems to be playing favorites with the mayoral candidates, uh, and you know, you got to be careful because the selfies will convict you. And I put a big LOL at the end of that comment. I'm not going to defend myself because you know what? It's not worth the time because as Chip and I have always said, you can't argue with stupid. They had too much practice. <laughs> well, you know, that's one of the problems. Listen, Facebook is a social media and and there are people who, who have the, to, you know, they want to tell people that they're going to the, the supermarket and that they had, they're having a bad hair day. And I always have a bad hair day. Actually, I have a no hair day most of the time. So that's, that's the problem. But the fact is that, listen, it, you know, it's, it's not an accurate, it's not an accurate news source. It's, it's a social network, and, and this is one of the reasons that I don't do Facebook. It's because, you know, it's, it's very easy to, to argue on the phone, argue on Facebook, and argue when you can't touch someone and maybe get your hands around their throat. But the fact is that that's, you know, you know show up at the council meetings, participate in government, but, you know, you're going to always have these arguments, and, and to me, they're counterproductive because, you know, they'll go, some people have nothing better to do than get on Facebook and babble for, you know, for an entire day. That's not, you know, I mean, okay, if, if that's what, you know, floats your boat, you know, do, go for it. But I, I have better things to do with my time. <laughs> you know, if you're talking about politics, it should be a, you know, it, it should be a rational uh, you know, a rational discussion, and we should talk about facts, and it shouldn't be these. Then it ends up mudslinging, and it gets personal and everything else. And, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't see the point in it. You want to talk, show up at the city council and complain. We'll be there. And, and so that, that will segue on us into our man, Carlos, <laughs> had a meeting with the missing mayor, C. Yeah. Samuel Sutter, and his crack team, because Sam never has an answer. That's why Sam wanted more people that work for him, because apparently he doesn't have to remember anything. He has an individual uh, on his staff to remember every single item that the mayor is supposed to know. But uh, Carlos, why don't you yeah, tell us a little bit yeah, about I, your meeting? I, I, can, I can tell you a little bit, but before I, I go there, I would like to say that um, he, uh, CJ had an, uh, a problem, I guess, um, with that post because of the American flag and I have an American flag behind me I don't know if you set me up or something CJ, but um, and I, I feel like I have the set from last night's debates Republican debate 
But um, with that being said, well, I... Um, Carlos, hold on a second. <laughs> I did not have a problem with the American flag. It had nothing to do with the American flag. It was a joke in regards to Alan Sylvia's selfie predilection. He loves to take selfies. He's performing as Mayor Will Flanagan did. Everything was a selfie. And it's not that it's a bad thing. It's not that a good, it's a good thing. I just found it very amusing. Okay, yeah, let, me, let, me, be, let, me, let me interject, let me interject here. <laughs> um, you know, when you talk about something, you give it credibility. So the fact that we're talking about this makes it relevant, but it isn't. We're here to talk about politics and, <laughs> yeah. and about the about what really happens in the world, not what a bunch of not what a bunch of Facebook commandos uh, uh, do. Uh, you know, at, and and uh, that that picture of the kid with the hot pocket saying, "Ma, get me a hot pocket." I'm I'm being a badass on Facebook is very appropriate because it's easy to sit behind a sit behind a, a com you know, at a computer in your house and 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 even take an assumed name sometime and babble endlessly on Facebook. Well, we're here in front of the camera, taking responsibility for everything we say, and we're trying to talk about politics. Yep. So let's not, let's, let's not get it, let's not go there. Let's talk about, about Sam Sutter and the fact that how many questions he answered directly I, without I calling for help. To say, I have to say on his behalf that he's understaffed. Oh. <laughs> okay. I have to give him that. Are you he's, guys, he's, he's understaffed. You guys have really become friends, huh? He's understaffed. <laughs> he's, he's, really he's really understaffed. Because guess what? If I don't know um, uh, the color from white and blue, I need to hide somebody that can tell me which color it's right and, and which color it's blue. If I don't know how to put two and two, that's four. I need to hide somebody that can tell me two and two, it's four. You know, so that's, that's why I'm saying he's right. He's understaffed. Uh, because <laughs> every question, every question or everything that we need to talk about, um, he has to, re to, to rely and, and, and help and, and somebody that knows about the issue. Um, so that's why, um, and I'm being serious now that he's understaffed. Serious, right? Yes. Not Syrian. No, right. no. Okay. You guys are laughing, but uh, I'm not laughing right now. I, I, no, it's we're, we're, serious. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just being we're being like this because we're ready to cry. <laughs> because, you know, the, the mayor is supposed to at least have some idea uh, and have maybe one or two answers. But we've seen this at neighborhood meetings where he brings Kathy Ann and he has to bring Lou Pacheco. And, he, and now he's got Nick and he's got the other guy there, uh, Spike. What's his name there? <laughs> I call him Spike. Rob Bet Lewski. Yeah, there you go. I can't remember no, that, that, that came, very long name. So. Everyone that walks into the office, I never say they. I, I don't know how to say their names. You yeah. know, it's. But that's okay. Um, but as you know, as the, but the, the key job. is, you know, you sat with our mayor. But isn't it ironic that the mayor is now running because it's campaign season? He he had a press conference at his alternate office in the Cherry and Webb building. That was moments ago. Yeah, and to to announce his his litter cleanup. Isn't it amazing how they get so involved in community activities and he's and they 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 hold press nobody could find him but at least we know where he lives now he lives in a cherry and web building <laughs> not in city hall well you know it, but, it, it's interestingly enough because you know I'm getting all the 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 amazing news news feeds not nude feeds news feeds um, Mike Mayoza just announced that he is going to run for uh, charter commissioner um, which he said he wasn't going to run for anything uh, that announcement was five minutes old um, the mayor held his press conference over at the Cherry Webb building talking about litter control and doing a cleanup down at the waterfront for obviously a need. Uh, I don't know how you clean up all that construction debris because, you know, a crap hole is still a crap hole any way you look at it. And because of that construction, it doesn't look that great. I don't know why he's going to try to waste people's time to try to clean up something that is going to be made a mess immediately afterwards. Once the construction's done, let's get down there and clean it up. Come on, CJ. I know you're being rhetorical, but the <laughs> fact is that, look, we know why he's doing this. It's election, election time. Yeah. Well, I've It's got the election best, time. I've got the best quote going, and it was said last night on the Today Show by John Stewart before he went off the air, and that is, the best defense against bullshit is vigilance. Yeah. When you smell when you smell something, do something about it. Well, you know what? We've been smelling something in Fall River for a long time, and when you try to do something, you're negative. You're negative. 
Why is everything about you negative? I mean, I, I have to say this. Now is, is uh, yes, is using the, the uh, election time to uh, reach out to neighborhoods. Because I don't know how, but finally, after eight months, he realizes that he needs the neighborhoods to get reelected. Um, and he's starting, he's starting playing their cards. Uh, and, and it was my turn to be called to the principal office um, to see if he could uh, do something for me. And the only thing that, that, uh, that he, he pretty much uh, um, told me was that he felt sorry that he had to close down the library. But he didn't say that, though, did he? No, no. Somebody said it. His for mouthpiece him. said it. <laughs> yeah, somebody Secret said agent it for man him. said but that. Because that's why it happened, uh, 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 Chip. Th that's why it happened was uh, somebody said that G it, 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 that is forty-two thousand dollars that we can save. And let's yeah, but you know, I'm glad you, know? you said that, Caesar. Because do we really save this? Now we look over to the other side of the closing, the senior citizen center down at the down at the. Uh, uh, center of the city around five elderly and handicapped complexes. We saved 41 or 42,000. They About came 42. up with some ridiculous figure. But now they're going to bus them three days a week to a different spot. So they only get it three days a week and they have to wait for a bus. And uh, they have a, a particular, they just can't walk over like they did before. And now we find out after a little research, it costs more to run that bus than it costs to keep the senior citizen center open. They have two people that are salaried with benefits. You have the, 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 the vehicles, the maintenance and everything else. And it's costing more than it would have cost. This again is a classic example of Sam Sutter government. He only knows how to, you know, pretend cut, even even like the, the cuts he was projecting if they didn't uh, they didn't approve this sham of a budget. Mm -hmm. Actually, half of those cuts were already people not that were off the payroll. They were they were attrition. And and this is the thing that this is the thing that bothers me. That there seems to be no understanding. And you said you touched upon the fact that now he's going to the neighborhood associations because he understood or he's beginning to understand that the people are upset and angry and justifiably so because he thinks he's an elitist and because all the rich people and if you drive up in some of these affluent neighborhoods like right across the street from from uh, BCC with people who probably you know, who make far greater than the city in average income it looks like a garden that's growing Sam Sutter signs now mm -hmm. And, and you look at the neighborhoods, you don't see a lot of Sutter signs in the poorer neighborhoods because those are the people that the tax increases and the fee increases have affected. And you know, there's an old Castilian proverb. It says, tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. And the fact is he walks with very rich, very affluent people. And he does not have the finger on the pulse of this city. He doesn't even have his finger on the pulse of City Hall mm -hmm. because he's never there. And I think it's really telling now that he had the press conference finally where he really spends most of his time in the Cher Cherry and Webb building. What kind of mayor is not accessible to the people of Fall River? Mm -hmm. If you go into City Hall, you can never find him because he's hiding in the Cherry and Webb building. And that's, that's just wrong. And this is one of the problems we have in, in this city that we have a, a government now made up of people from out of town who don't understand. They, you, Lou Pacheco couldn't find, he couldn't find Choate Street if his life depended on it without a GPS. You name a street in Fall River, he's probably never been on it. The only streets he knows are the ones he comes in from Rainham and drives to City Hall and parks his car. Mm -hmm. Because this is the government we have. We've got a bunch of old politicians, old, po and I mean old, Carlton Viveris <laughs> was the mayor in the 80s in this city. And, and Bob Correa, a one-term mayor, but a 30-year state rep who had an ignominious exit from the mayor's office after only one term. And Sam is replicating that, aggravating the public. But we have a government it's bad enough with the council because they just nod their head and regardless, never do homework and never read reports and never do anything. But we've got a mayor that's completely oblivious to the city he lives in. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you saw it firsthand. When you have a meeting with him, if you ask him a question, mm -hmm. no. he has to ask Lou Pacheco, Kathy Ann Viveris, Nick Camara, no relation, as I said, um, <laughs> Bent Lewesky or whatever his name is, uh, Rob Bent Lewesky or Bent Lewesky or whatever, Esky. I don't know, they just, they but, just picked but, some letters. And, 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 and remember, and I'm going to remind everybody, remember, one of the first things that Sam sort of uttered was, you know, I need more staff. The mayor in New Bedford's got a bigger staff than I do because the man doesn't want to do his job. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem I have with Sam Sutter. He doesn't want to do his job. He wants to be like the Queen of England. All he wants to do is be a ceremonial mayor and cut ribbons and go around and, 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 and do whatever he wants to do while he did what he did as a DA. Hey, you got this case, you got that case, you got that case, see you later. I'm gonna go play tennis or something, or whatever I'm going to do. But you can't be the mayor of this city. This is a working class city. We've got a mayor that's making a lot of money. And if you want to be a ceremonial mayor, we're talking about the Charter Commission. Vote the Charter Commission. And let's change the Charter. Let's go like Worcester. Let's have a city manager that's responsible for the city and a mayor that's ceremonial that gets 20000 bucks a year because everybody as they've identified him as exactly what he is, ceremonial and a ribbon cutter. You know, the fact is that the Queen of England really doesn't have any effect on their government. And the fact is the, the King of Fall River really is not having much of an effect on our government. So with that, I'll let you guys is, go. Is that, the new, is that the new name, Ceremonial Sutter? Is that the new name? Hey, maybe that's what the C really stands for. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, Carlos, who took responsibility for closing that uh, library in, in your uh, neighborhood? I have to say that um, uh, Lupa Chico, um, I, I truly believe that uh, the idea came uh, from Lupa Chico. Um, we have some going on somewhere. Um, we I think he's coming. Tells a man who leads a life of danger. <laughs> There's a secret agent theme song. Oh. I think he's at the door. You better be careful. <laughs> I, 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 I do have to say that his phone rings, and he didn't pick up because he was talking to me. Oh, well, that's uh, a good thing. Okay. That's because it's election time. That's election year, yes. <laughs> and, and, and I'm talking about Lou Pacheco. Yeah. And the I'm to, the no. mayor had to take a call. Yo, yo, you got to leave the room and take a call. But Lou Pacheco, um, um, you know, they, they was talking to me, and... Uh, and he, he didn't pick up the phone. But I, I truly believe that th th there was Lupa Chico's decision just based on saving uh, those uh, $42,000. That's the only thing that he based on uh, uh, that decision was that. Uh, and it's, it, here is one of our decisions that we do on our regular lifetimes is we, then we, we come to find out in the long term that we, we didn't save money, we lose money. But that's what we find uh, and, out and, every and, year. And we do that on our personal life. Sometimes we make decisions and then, then we regret it, you know. And, and that's exactly what, what happened uh, with that. And that's what, hap what happened with, with the senior center. Because it doesn't make sense now making uh, people go in buses and, and go out of their neighborhood, you know, to spend the day and, and be paying eight hours uh, a, a bus driver just to, to drive them, you know, 20 minutes. But you know, Carlos, that's what we do all the time. We do this all the time. Oh, we save forty-two thousand dollars, and then when the budget comes to the end of the year, the fiscal year, we sound. Oh, well, the forty-two thousand we save actually costs us eighty-seven thousand dollars because, hey, it's not our money. What do we care? It's you know we're gonna just piss it away. And and, it just and the question the was, and the question though was po uh, that he posed to me was, how can we fix it? How can we? Uh, oh. How can you fix it? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> And believe me, the only thing that I ask him was, please don't put it back on the same place because <laughs> that's, that place, that's, that's you know, real, that's please don't go again. to the same place because, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, that place was open in 1976 and, and they never wasted a dollar on it. And, and just please don't do the double mistake, not opening back on the same place. Do you know, this, um, is, this is our problem, though. We never learn from history. 
We never ever learn from it. We do the same thing over and over and over again. We say, oh, well, you know, it'll be different this time because we're moving Fall River forward. We're moving Fall River forward right down the bankruptcy aisle. It, look, there, there's, look, CJ, we all know how this city's been run for the last 20 years. Uh, number one, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to look back because they go, oh, you know, we're, we're not going to look back. We're not, we're not going to, we're not, or they say that, you know, they actually lie. They, they practice revisionist history. Uh, you know, all of a sudden these things didn't happen or they happened in a different way. Uh, and, and, you know, I watched the Republican debate for a while last night and, and it was pretty funny because a lot of the things that was said were, you know, were really appropriate and, and, and some, they were talking about, you know, uh, you know, they talked about political correctness being a problem in this country, and it is because when people begin to to get involved in government, they're called, you know, they're, they're you know they're, they're called names and negative and 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 they you know you they they can even call you a terrorist for God's sakes, I you know it. But the fact is, you know, they don't like anybody, and as John Stewart said, they don't like anybody to pay attention. Because then if you educate yourself, you're going to be appalled at what they're doing and you're going to get rid of them. They don't, they do not, they do not want this. And as one of the candidates said when he be began to discuss immigration, they said that we've been talking about this for 30 years. And you know something? It's true. The fact is that, you know, all we do is talk. And all we do is, is you know, and, and then they make either excuses or they ignore the fact that how we got here. You know, there's an old adage, if you, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. They never look into anything. They never really research anything. The president of the city council said they don't read half the reports. The statistics that I read at the last, at the, at the, at the meeting before last, was then Steve Long was, was reading it like it was a, a revelation. I've been mm -hmm. giving those stats for two years. The fact is that, you know, in private industry or in life, you know, when you screw up at a, as a child, when you put your hand on the stove and you burn it, you normally don't do it a second time. When you mess up and it costs you something, you normally figure out a way not to, to have that consequence come in again. But in government, we do not have that. And in the city of Fall River, in the city of Fall River, we have that to the 10th power. The reality is that, you know, in government, they screw up and the taxpayer pays more money. And there's no consequences, and there's never a fix because there's no necessity to fix because they're not held accountable. This is where the voters, and I blame the voters, and I blame, I vote in every final election, not in every primary, as I said, because sometimes I'm, I'm, an, ind I'm an independent. Uh, I won't vote in a partisan election unless there's a particular candidate. But the fact is, it's up to us to fix this government. It's up to us to put people in those seats that are going to look. It's reprehensible that we put 22 windows in the government center and the answer that the people got after the investigation was, well, we can't really figure it out, so, you know, to hell with it. We're just going to let that, that obscenity of mismanagement just fade away. And it's wrong. It's patently wrong. You know, the hell with political correctness. You know, the fact is, let's be pragmatic. We have to fix government. This September and November, we have an opportunity to carry forward what we did with the recall. And this is what we've got to do. You know, you, you know, we can't, we, you know, we can't continue to depend on politicians to do the right thing. We have to make them do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, Carlos, when you had the meeting, when Lou Pacheco said, what can we do to fix this? He was saying, what can I do to buy your neighborhood's votes for this election? And then after it's over, it's going to be back to the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. You give somebody one chance, if they screw up, they're out of there. But let me, let me bring you back to, um, to that meeting with, uh, with the mayor. Back in time. Uh, let me bring you back. The reason that, he, he, that I was called into that meeting was because uh, the adoption of the 34 streets that we did um, 
north of uh, 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 Pleasant Street. Um, and according to um, Lou Pacheco, he say, uh, according to him, he said that that has to be a different approach because for other neighborhoods, that means that we're stealing those streets to our neighborhood to make our neighborhood bigger. But what I explained to him was, I will agree with, with him if we had borders with other neighborhoods. But for you to go to those particular streets, you need to drive by, by Flint neighborhoods to get in there. And by the other side, you're coming from Westport. So it's no other, we don't board with any other neighborhoods. That's why the people on those streets call themselves part of the Flint. So we went, and because they asked us to be part of the Flint, uh, we went and we adopted. So now, w according to Lou Pacheco, he wants us to contact residents from those streets for them to come forward and, and, and to, to City Hall and, and pretty much tell them that they want to be part of the, the, the neighborhood. So whatever our board decided, it's not good. Really? Yes. So that so now we've got the mayor micromanaging the people. So, for but here, he so. was his division is the mayor is a board one. He, he agreed with me. I don't know if it's to get my my vote, but he agreed. Cabo. He agreed with Come me. On, and on the other side, we have the coach um, not agreeing with him. You know, Carlos. So, <laughs> he he. It's election year. He needs to be seen with you. He wants the Portuguese vote. Okay, we know this. That's what he's trying to do. He already placated the Bank Street Neighborhood Association. He uh, gave them a guard. Let me tell you okay? something. <laughs> My neighborhood don't have a piece of land to, for the city to give it to me. Yeah. And, and, and even if they had, uh, the mayor was doing his job and giving my neighborhood something. He won't give anything to me. I know. So, you know what I'm saying? So, even if he gives me a, 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 a million dollar library right now, he's still not giving me anything to get my vote. He's giving my neighborhood. And whoever lives on my neighborhood, they're free to vote for whatever yeah, they want. But, but his committee already gave you nothing. They gave you nothing. And I don't want nothing. That's exactly <laughs> what I told them. Mr. Mayor, don't worry about it because in uh, one year, we will have a library at the Flint. Hey, you know what? This is amazing because this is forward of a politics. Total yeah. panic mode. That's yeah, what we're in. That, that's what we're in right so now. So now I'm going to, I want to, I got, I have to read this, CJ, because this is really, they were, they were talking about politically correct, but, you know, and, and, and interfering your ability. And you may not agree with this. This is going to horrify a few people, but. Uh, this was posted on, on Facebook today. I thought it was very interesting because on the heels of that, uh, on the heels of that uh, statement about political correctness by the Donald and a few other people, and this is, I'm going to read this quickly. Ever wonder why terrorists aren't kidnapping Russians? In 1986, Muslim extremists kidnapped four Soviet diplomats in Beirut. Kidnappers demanded Moscow support for their fighters in Lebanon. As, it, as expected, Moscow ignored these demands. The kidnappers, in order to show that they were not kidding, killed one of the hostages. Moscow replied, the KGB kidnapped a family of one of the Hezbollah leaders. He was castrated and killed, and the leader himself was sent a package containing the body parts and a note saying that the, the, the other family members would receive the same treatment. The three remaining diplomats were immediately released. So sometimes you have to fight fire with fire. And the fact is that people may be horrified by that, but the reality is this is the real world. You know, this isn't, this isn't the text, this isn't, uh, this isn't academia. This is, a, this is the real world and life is a grindstone. If you let it grind you down, it will. But if you let it polish you up, it may. So stay angry and vote. Hey, it's, a, it's amazing because I had so much more to talk about today. Hey, we'll see you on Monday. And keep watching. Have a great day. Bye.